Welcome to Melden Law and Friends. I am Jeffrey Melden, founder of Melden Law, and we're very excited to be with you. This is our 100th episode. So uh, welcome. This is a special event for me, uh, as well as our guest, to be uh, on the 100th episode. It's been two years uh, since we've been doing these podcasts, and I want to thank everybody for the support you've shown. We have thousands of people that turn in, uh, turn, tune in to the show every uh, week, and we want to thank you. Uh, some upcoming events we have is uh, the football game, Missouri, coming into town. It's a noon game, so you got to get up really early to drink your Bloody Marys if you want to tailgate. And uh, we are giving away two tickets plus a $100 gift certificate to Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, where we are at right now. If you look behind me, for those that are watching on uh, either Facebook or YouTube, you can see all the helmets uh, here at the podcast room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. It's wonderful here. It's a museum and a great restaurant. Uh, all the food is uh, farm to table, and uh, they cook it uh, well. So uh, I'm looking forward to having dinner here after the show. Uh, come and join me. It, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, also, volleyball's in full swing. Uh, we're playing LSU coming up uh, the 8th and 9th of October, and we're giving away tickets for the volleyball team. Volleyball is always big in uh, Gainesville. Uh, Mary Wise has been our coach for 30 years now and does an incredible job of bringing in the top athletes. You've seen volleyball uh, on TV, see it in person here, and you will have an amazing experience. It's really terrific. Uh, this coming Friday, starting at noon, is the homecoming parade, and you will see Melvin Law marching behind the University of Florida Gator Marching Band. We are so excited. It's our first year. The whole Melden Law team is going to be there in full force, all dressed up to uh, support our Gator Band. They always do the, uh, the walk, and it's the best part of the homecoming parade is when the Gator Band comes in. You get to hear them uh, play our fight song and all their other great songs, and uh, they are awesome. I think we have 420 people in the Gator Band. It's pretty cool. Uh, so uh, check it out. Uh, again, uh, football. LSU's coming to town. We have another uh, giveaway, two tickets, plus a $100 gift certificate to the Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. All you have to do is go to Melden Law Facebook page. So if you go to Melden Law on the Facebook page, you can enter the contest. There's actually one uh, display, one button that you can press on, and it shows all the giveaways. And you can enter all the contests. Uh, you don't have to just enter one. And when you enter the contest, uh, we'll notify you at least a day or so before the event to let you know uh, that you've won. So uh, join us and get into it. Uh, for those of you in Ocala, October 15th and 16th, Saturday, Sunday, big Ocala home show uh, at uh, World Equestrian Center. So check it out. Melden Law will be there representing. And uh, we love to uh, uh, include our Marion County friends, especially at this home show. It's pretty cool. We were there last year, and uh, we really uh, love supporting uh, what they're doing in Ocala. Uh, we have the Tom Petty weekend coming up. Uh, Tom Petty's birthday was October 20th, 1950. And the celebration of his life is taking place right here in Gainesville, Florida. Tom Petty is a native son of Gainesville, Florida, grew, grew up here and. uh Actually, I was Tom Petty's first attorney in 1971 when I started practicing law. Got to know Tom very well, and uh, we really appreciate everything that he did to uh, bring great music and notoriety to the Gainesville, Florida community. So anyhow, the festivals at Hartwood, we're going to be dealing with uh, 
uh, some of the details coming up at the second half of our show. Dan Spees, who's the uh, organizer of the Tom Petty Festival. It's a free festival, and uh, all you have to do is go to uh, TomPettyFestival.com, and you can get your free tickets. So uh, enjoy it. And uh, again, uh, this coming Friday is the grand opening for the Great Southern Music Hall event at the Matheson Historical Museum on University Avenue, 513 East University Avenue. Meldon Law is the sponsor for the uh, Great Southern Music Hall retrospective of the music scene in uh, Gainesville, Florida during the 1970s. Yours truly was the founder of uh, the Great Southern Music Hall, and we had, it was the premier uh, forum for watching uh, musical events in Gainesville for uh, uh, forever, really, because it was more fun uh, than any of the other uh, venues that we had in town, and uh, the Phillips Performing Arts Theater is awesome. Uh, uh, however, back in the day, uh, people uh, at the Great Southern had the most fun of all because it was pretty loose. We had not only beer and wine, but whiskey. Uh, we had uh, lots of fun times there, and uh, it was a pretty uh, crazy scene, but uh, some of the greatest musicians in the country uh, played there uh, during the day. So we're going to go over that in the second half of the show. Uh, as you all know, Meldon Law is a personal injury law firm uh, located in the uh, heart of Florida, uh, Gainesville, Ocala, Lake City. We all have uh, offices in those locations as well as a office down in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale. So you can uh, uh, visit any of our offices. And if you want to visit our office, I promise you, we will give you a free gift uh, sometimes it'll be a great tumbler. Sometimes it'll be uh, uh, something else that you can uh, really use. So uh, join us. We love uh, having people show up at the office and say, I'm here, I want to say hello, and I uh, do you happen to have any free gifts, uh, Meldon Law swag? So uh, join us, and uh, we're going to have a great time. Uh, again, if you're ever involved in a, uh, in a serious crash, or you know anybody that's been seriously injured, we help people put their lives back together after they've been seriously injured. So please uh, give us a call at 352-373-8000 or just go to Meldon Law and you'll uh, find us, MeldonLaw.com. Google the name Meldon. Uh, I don't think there's any other Meldon lawyers around the world. So uh, you can just put in M-E-L-D-O-N and you'll find us. Anyhow, we have two terrific guests here. Um, the first part of the show, we're going to be talking about rowing. And uh, it's something I've watched on TV quite a bit. Um, I've, rowed, I've done rowboats, uh, but I've never done competitive rowing. Um, we have Jess Bron Brahem. Is that how you say it? Broham? Broham, yeah. Broham. Yeah. And you're from New Zealand, right? I, I am from New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. And Jen Figueroa? Yeah. I got it. How'd you do that? I'm good. That I was got, good. I got, well, I'm, I'm doing my best uh, to try to figure out. So we got uh, Jess and Jen here. And uh, I, I'm really excited to hear about uh, the rowing export, ex, the, uh, uh, what we have going on as far as rowing in uh, the north central Florida community. Uh, why don't you start, uh, Jess, and tell us a little bit about how you got involved. Yeah, well, I came to Gainesville last year in August um, after spending four years at Washington State University um, over in Pullman, Washington on their rowing team and instantly got involved with Gainesville Area Rowing in a volunteer capacity. Um, and, yeah, that was sort of my introduction to rowing in North Central Florida, um, some alligators, uh, good weather other than mm -hmm. that and um, yeah I mean Jen can tell us a little bit more about the history of GAR she's been involved a little bit longer than I have um, so, yeah. why don't you go ahead and tell us some more 
Okay. Um, so I've been here since 2003, and I was not here for the beginning of GAR. Um, GAR so stands for GAR what? is Gainesville Area Rowing. Okay. So it is a club team um, to teach rowing to middle school, high school, and adults. Um, so we've got a really wide range of ages. Um, and GAR started in the mid-90s. So GAR began as Eastside High School crew. And then as more and more kids started and started adding in from different schools, then shortly after that, you know, in, in 2002, they went ahead and joined everyone from GAR under that name. But GAR actually began in 1998. And so since then, we've been a club team. Um, it's more common in, in the country and, and certainly in Florida to not have each individual high school having their own program. It makes a lot more sense to have a club program because then you can combine a greater group of athletes. Um, and then it's really good for the kids because they have friends from all the schools, not now, just the school. When I to. see rowing on TV, it's usually done on a river, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're competing and stuff like that, you know, up in Boston. I know they have a lot of rowing going on there and stuff like that. Can you give us uh, some perspective on the difference between rowing on, you know, lakes? I don't know if are there rivers that you you row on here. Yeah, there's a, there's rivers in Jacksonville. I mean, so sometimes we go you and race there, you, and you, got you know, the St. John's. Yeah, right? you got the St. John's, the Arlington, and so there's some river based rowing. There's also um, intercoastal and Daytona Beach. So there are teams here in Florida that race on rivers and practice on rivers. Um, but a lot of us are on lakes. I think that's the most common and to be on freshwater. And um, our lake, Noonan's Lake, is the just the most wonderful lake for training that anyone could ever ask for. Well, what are the attributes of it that, uh, you th that make it so great? It's miles and miles and miles of uninterrupted shoreline that's not developed. Um, it's surrounded with beautiful tall trees, swampland, bald eagles, alligators, nice fishermen. It's the best place that I've ever rode. Um, and it's, it's just a wonderful place to train. And I think sometimes people who only row here in Gainesville, they don't realize how good it is until they go and row on a congested waterway and then have to deal with, you know, ski boats and jet skis and people hitting oh. them or traffic and, and our lake. I mean, you know, this morning I was out at 630 with three other ladies and we just saw a few, you know, some boats from UF out practicing and a couple fishermen, and that was it. So um, Noonan's Lake is is the main place um, that that you row at. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because I know there's other there there's other places um, that lakes around here where I've seen a few people rowing, but Noonan's Lake is the best, and Noonan's and I don't it. think you find. Uh, I don't. You don't have too many motor boats running around there, and stuff. Not too no. many. No. Yeah, it's pretty good most of the time. Yeah. The number of alligators keeps some of the recreational activities and boats down, which is oh. awesome. So what we have are usually really, really nice fishermen that are out fishing, and I mean it's a wonderful lake for fishing. Um, so I mean it's it's a great lake to share, and it's a great lake to row on. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there are a bunch of gators on Noonan's mm -hmm. Lake. Anybody that's uh, flown into Gainesville, when, just before you get to the airport, you fly over Noonan's Lake, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see it's a big lake. It is. And, uh, you know, it, it has a long history because they found um, Indian um, dugout canoes, mm -hmm. right? Yep, mm -hmm. the Pithlachoco yeah. tribe. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what do you know about that? Well, so we know that that tribe and other tribes probably as well use the waterway to pass goods from one end of the lake to the other. Um, and so we always kind of wished our lake was named the you know Lake Pithlachoco after that particular tribe, um, but it's a very sacred place. Wow, yeah, because every time the water level goes down, all of a sudden they discover all these uh, Indian dugout canoes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So it's a place that's been used for... Um, Millennium, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's pretty cool, and it's it's very close to town. I mean, it's mm -hmm. uh, just a short drive. So, Jess, tell us a little bit about um, what brought you to Gainesville and what your impression is of uh, you know the you know North Central Florida. Yeah, I'm actually here studying my PhD in the Department of Sport Management at University of Florida. So, um, I'm here researching athlete well-being um, and obviously with GAR being so so available to me I've been able to really um, 
break up my time and be able to uh, involve myself practically with my research as well by getting to interact with the athletes. Yeah, so what is your area of study in, in particular? I mean, do you have a focus within sports management? Right, yeah. At the moment, I'm researching um, a concept of athlete voice. So we've seen a lot of a athlete activism recently, um, as well as issues within organizations. So I'm sort of researching the pathways of athletes to communicate within organizations. So it's like how to build a uh, culture within an organization? Yeah, how to uh, allow athletes to express themselves and, and as well as... Um, further develop um, a sense of organizational culture. What are some of the, um, uh, the best techniques that you've come across as far as building a good culture and a team? Um, the, the first thing, uh, the most important thing that I've learned is that coaches have to be willing to listen. Um, as coaches, we have to, especially younger athletes, so much power. And for them to be able to express their voice and, and talk and communicate um, about any concerns they have, it really, really elevates um, their well-being and the well-being of others around them. Well, I'm very interested in that. I mean, at Melden Law, we're always involved in team building as well mm -hmm. and trying to develop a culture uh, that allows um, others to speak their voice and to give uh, constructive criticism when it's warranted and uh, also just to talk and speak, you know, let everybody know uh, what challenges they face so that we can all collectively get together to help solve different uh, problems that we have. Yeah, and I mean, that's exactly what's important, just allowing people to communicate. Sometimes it doesn't have to be structured or formal. It's just having that opportunity. Well, I'm going to uh, ask that we take a quick one-minute break, and uh, we're going to come back to Melden Law and Friends in 60 seconds. Oh, my gosh. I can't even believe this. Look. Look what you have done to my truck! Excuse me, it's your fault, it's not my fault. Yes, it is your no, fault! Not, no, I am no. calling Jeffrey Meldon from Meldon Law. So I'm gonna call Jeffrey, my husband. Meldon Law, this is Jeffrey speaking. Jeffrey! This no, person no, here, honey. this person lady, he might... New client? Yes, but this one might be a little tricky. I thought I was in a truck accident. Because of the accident, I resulted in three back surgeries. We saw advertisements on TV, and guess who popped up more often than that? It was Jeffrey. The communication that he provided was so appreciative that he shows his compassion as a human. He assisted us in achieving one of our dreams, the acquisition of a home, and we're here today with smiles on our face with the assistance from Jeffrey. Welcome back to Melden Law and Friends. Um, I'm here with Jess and Jen, and we are having a great time talking about uh, rowing in Gainesville, and apparently Newnan's Lake is an ideal place to uh, row undisturbed and have a great time, right? It is. So anyhow, Jess, I underlined something here. It said that you were also studying uh, the, uh, on the impact of social media on the mental health of student athletes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So that was actually my master's thesis that I did while I was at Illinois State University. So that's where I was immediately prior to coming here. Um, and so during my time as a student athlete, I had interacted with um, some of the other sports and actually learned that some of our football players were receiving some pretty shocking messages from um, fans or other people in the community um, via these social media apps um, and unfortunately we had a football player die by suicide while I was at Washington State and while it was never explicitly linked um, to social media um, there, there had been some conversation about him on social media leading up to that following a bowl game so um, 
I really took that and tried to explore it a little bit more. It was a topic that hadn't been explored too much, so I used um, some social media scales, like social media use, um, as well as some mental health scales, anxiety, depression, resilience, um, and, and identified um, if there was some sort of link between social media and mental health issues, and I did find that. Um, but it's definitely something that needs to continue to be investigated. Okay, so um, would you, uh, do you have any suggestions as far as uh, better ways to deal with uh, uh, the, ex people are exposed to social media all the time. As a matter of fact, there's some people that rarely put their phone down, right? Right, right. <laughs> right. Uh, and in, when I grew up, you know, um, when I was born, we didn't even have televisions, let alone, uh, we did have telephones, but not televisions, okay? And uh, it's an amazing um, change when people are walking down the street, not only not saying hello to each other, but not even looking when they're crossing the street, uh, they're so attached to social media. Mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, is there any... I don't think we're going to put the toothpaste back into the tube, right? No, absolutely not. <laughs> so what, what are some things that we can do to promote healthy living while still acknowledging that, uh, yeah, you know, social media is here to stay? I think that one of the biggest things is just encouraging athletes to continue what or younger individuals to continue to be active. Um, that's time away from their phones. Um, like you said, they, they're always going to spend some time on their phones. It's about um, asking questions to help them be aware of maybe the amount of time that they're spending on their phones, what they're doing when they're on their phones, and even the type of media that they're consuming. So we know that there's some, some individuals who use social media to compare themselves with other people and, and scroll through and think, this person's so much skinnier than me, this person's so much faster than me. Um, and so it's, it's about modifying that use so that it's a positive experience. It can be something that you use to relax and get away from all the other things that you're doing, but not crossing that line to dictating your life. So is that something you think we might incorporate into the education system as far as uh, even with young, I mean, my granddaughter's five years old, and she's, you know, an amazing uh, as far as, you know, taking a cell phone and, you know, utilizing it. Like when she was barely two years old, she was already a master at, you know, social media and the cell phone. And we have to, you know, watch, you know, watch that behavior because, you know, two, three, four, five years old, it's like crazy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're young minds, they're impressionable. Um, what uh, have you a actually come up with any ideas or plans how to deal with uh, you know the starting when people are young because I, I think by the time you're older even eight or nine or ten years old habits are formed that are uh, difficult to change right and so I think at that age it's it's really important about forming good habits and um, I think this is where things like our act uh, our athletic clubs come into play where we're able to get kids into a routine where they're being active, they're socializing with friends, they're socializing with adults and coaches, um, they're learning about sort of different things um, in life, you know, they're interacting with peers, maybe forming relationships that they haven't previously had. And all of this, I think, um, emphasizes why it's so important to get involved in clubs at a young age and, and try to minimize that screen time and build those healthy habits. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Jen, what are your thoughts on all of this? I mean, my th I grew up without it as well. And so for me, a phone has always kind of felt like an interference. <laughs> um, I tried to make it as long as I could without having a phone. But when I started coaching rowing, I realized I needed a radar um, so that I could make sure I was, you know, watching weather with the kids. And so I, I, I grew up without it. I wouldn't miss it if I didn't have it. Um, and I think some of the things that are on social media are very scary, um, very concerning. And yeah, I mean, I think if, if for anything, you know, for young people of any age, I mean, we've got rowing starting at sixth grade. You know, and so to have an opportunity for kids to come out, you know, two or three days a week in middle school and then five days a week for high school 
and their parents know that for at least three hours, their kids aren't on their phones and they're outside and they're exercising and they're making friends with kids on other teams. I mean, that's got to have a positive impact on the well-being of all of those athletes and, and on their parents too. I mean, if you can then have an idea of what your kid is doing when they get home and try to continue interacting with them, then you actually can have some authentic time with your child and, and your kid can have an authentic afternoon with their friends as well versus going home and staring at a screen. Yeah, my, my daughter's got three kids, you know, uh, Noah's seven and uh, Naomi's five and Shoshana's two, right? And so she had three in five years. She was busy. Well, a main issue that she has is the distraction caused by cell phone. I mean, I, we're talking about rowing uh, today, but actually rowing, uh, you know, fits right in with the concept because it's a positive attitude where people can, number one, have a good time. Number two, it's healthy, right? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you ladies are really, you know, in good shape. <laughs> And um, I've, I've worked out, you know, most of my life and uh, enjoy uh, being fit. And it, I think uh, the me one message that we should get out to everybody today is uh, we have uh, great rowing in Gainesville, Florida, right? We do. We and have amazing rowing. So yeah. how can people get involved? Um, well... We have an Instagram page, speaking of social media, so... <laughs> That's how... <laughs> but it's positive. It's yeah. positive. It's positive. So if you're, if you're on um, social media, you could um, send a DM to Gainesville Area Rowing. That's the page. Or you could also go to Google, um, type in Gainesville Area Rowing. Our webpage will come up, number one. It can be a little confusing to navigate, but there's some options there for contacting us. Um, but yeah, honestly, anyone can come out and try um, rowing free for two weeks. We have a two-week trial. Um, and then from there, um, we can decide what sort of involvement people want to have. Um, yeah, that's sort of so, the easiest so, way. So um, you have all kinds of different levels of rowing. So if somebody, I've never rowed before, I want to start, I want to check it out, you'll get, get them involved let them put their pinky in the water, figure out uh, mm -hmm. just where they want to go with it. And then every once in a while, you find somebody who really, uh, you know, wants to get seriously involved with it. Yeah, and I mean, Jen, she rows with the Masters, so she can speak a little more to this. But we have a group of Masters who are very competitive. And then we have a group of Masters who do rowing to hang out with some people and get a little bit of exercise in. So not everything has to be competitive. And that's a good message for everybody who's listening and watching to uh, the show today. Um, you, all you have to do is uh, Gainesville Area Rowing, GAR, and um, Google it, um, go on Instagram, however you want to find it, and uh, check it out. What a, here we live in this wonderful climate, right, for, you know, rowing, and, and you've got this great lake that you can go out to. Uh, I assume you've got some boats out there. So, mm -hmm. you know, the dock somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's easy. So uh, we have two ladies here who are inviting all of you to check them out. Uh, go have a great time. I promise you the alligators won't eat you up. That, uh, it hasn't you know, happened yet. It no, hasn't still happened here. yet. Yeah. Right. The alligators are they're just part of our culture mm -hmm. and our scenery here and everything. Mm -hmm. But... What a beautiful, beautiful. You, know, you, you were talking about all the wildlife out there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's only a few miles away from the airport in Gainesville, mm -hmm. and it is amazing. I mean, it, you know, I've been out there because I have friends that live out in Lakeshore Drive, which oh, cool. you, you take yeah. out mm -hmm. there, you know. And you go out there and you go, wait a minute, you know, it's so close to town, but yet it's completely different and so, you know, uh, it's it's almost primitive out there. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and support Gainesville Area Rowing. I want to thank um, Jen and Jess for joining us on the show. Uh, you guys, do it. Do something to make yourself happy. Get, get away from uh, TV. Get away from the cell phone. Uh, you can't watch TV and use your cell phone while you're rowing. So uh, we, we're going to get you out. Get everybody 
to do something that's a lot of fun, it's healthy, and it will clear your mind, I promise you. So thank you very much for joining us. And we'll be back in three minutes on Melden Law and Friends. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe this. Look, look what you have done to my truck. Excuse me, it's your fault, it's not my fault. Yes, it is your no, fault. Not, not I am not. calling Jeffrey Melden from Melden Law. So I'm gonna call Jeffrey, my husband. Melden Law, this is Jeffrey speaking. Jeffrey! This oh, person no, here, honey. this person later, he might... New client? Yes, but this one might be a little tricky. When you're a member of the Gator Nation, you know what it means to never back down. Melden Law has been a proud supporter of the Gator Nation since 1971. Two forces that won't back down. As the old saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. We still hear it. The sound of victory. The joy of being part of something great. And while things may not be the same right now, we haven't gone anywhere. If you bleed orange and blue, then Melden Law is the firm for you. We are here at the University of Florida where Albert and Alberta are competing in the Gator Penalty Shootout. Albert is ready to stop the shot at all costs. What a disaster! Luckily, Melton Law is the only official law firm partner of the Florida Gators. If you have suffered any injury, do not worry because Melton Law is going to help you with your recovery. Melton Law doesn't back down until they reach their goal! Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Melden Law, we won't back down. And I was in an accident. Someone ran red light and hit me, and I was hurt. You don't know where to turn. Luckily, I called Jeffrey. These big insurance companies, they don't want you to win. They truly don't. But Jeffrey and his firm and the people that work here, they just really fight for you. You call the law offices of Jeffrey Belden because you're going to need help, and they will help you. Welcome back to Melden Law and Friends. Uh, we have a great guest uh, for our second half of our show, Dan Spees, before uh, we get to Dan, we're going to go over a few of the exciting things going on. October 22nd, my wife Patricia and I, we are uh, co-chairs for the Alzheimer's Walk that's uh, going on. It's uh, at the Trinity Methodist Church out on 53rd Avenue in Gainesville, Florida. It starts at 9 in the morning. Uh, October 22nd is a busy, busy weekend because uh, the Gators don't play uh, anywhere uh, on that date, and uh, we're going to, it's actually a good segue into uh, the Tom Petty Festival, which is the same weekend. Uh, however, we want to talk about a few other things going on. We have the um, uh, football game coming up this weekend against Missouri. That's going to be great, and Melden Law is giving away two tickets plus a $100 gift certificate to Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. And we're in this amazing podcast room, Dan. Isn't it's, this cool? It's beautiful. And we got all of Steve Spurrier's helmets behind us. And pretty soon all the diners are going to be coming in here and looking at us like we're in a fishbowl. <laughs> <laughs> so <And> we are. <laughs> we are in a fishbowl here. So anyhow... Uh, we're having a good time. Uh, go to Melden Law Facebook page, and you will be able to get tickets. We're giving away tickets for the Missouri game. We're giving away tickets for the uh, LSU game. Uh, down the road, I'm sure we'll be giving away tickets for the uh, Florida-Georgia game over in Jacksonville. 
So the ga- uh, the Meldon Law Firm is the only official injury law firm partner of the Florida Gators, and that's how we score all these tickets. And we like to support our good friends at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill because it's an amazing museum, number one. And number two, uh, the food is fabulous. So uh, uh, come on out here. Check it out. Uh, you'll be amazed. It's one of the uh, largest restaurants in the whole state of Florida. It's, it's uh, huge and really a uh, uh, fun place to hang out. Uh, Lady Gator Volleyball is going on. And uh, the same page on Facebook, Meldon Law, you can score tickets for any of the volleyball games. Plus, uh, we always give away uh, gift cards uh to uh, either Spur, uh, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. I see volleyball, we're giving away a $50 gift card uh, and four tickets to the Swamp Boil. Uh, my team put that together. I don't even know where Swamp Boil is. However, it must be good if we uh, do that. We got the homecoming parade coming up, mm-hmm. and uh, Meldon Law donated the big truck that the band uses to transport all of their instruments around and uh melden law team is going to be walking behind the gator band what an exciting event right yeah it's a homecoming it's uh, friday starts at noon uh you go 13th street uh for about half a mile and then you hang a right on university avenue and head east and uh uh, for those of you that haven't been to a Gator homecoming parade, you got to do it. It's part of being a, a Gator and being a, in Gainesville. So uh, let's support our uh, our uh, everybody in the homecoming parade. They love uh, having folks there. We were going to th- uh, bring a bunch of Tootsie Rolls and hand them out, you know, and stuff. Yeah. But the university said they were afraid of people getting injured from us throwing Tootsie Rolls around uh, in the parade. So, <laughs> oh, but, in my eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm a personal injury attorney, right? So I guess I actually thought that day, and I was like going, oh, shit. <laughs> we could say that. It's uh, Anyhow. <laughs> so anyhow, but the homecoming parade is great. So uh, take advantage of it. Um, you know, any we try to uh, make a big deal of it at our office because it really is fun, and uh, we try to get everybody in the office to show up and then uh, have a nice uh, lunch and party afterwards. Uh, other things going on in uh, Marion County, the Ocala Home Show is coming up a week from Friday and uh, Saturday. Um, anyhow, check out the Ocala Home Show. It's at the World Equestrian Center. The dates are... October 15th and 16th. Excuse me, that's a Saturday and a Sunday. For those of you that haven't been out to the World Equestrian Center, do it. It is the most amazing equestrian center in the whole world. Uh, it, 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 words don't don't fail me when I try <laughs> to describe it, other than it, the best thing to put it for is like Disneyland for people who love horses. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've got a world-class hotel out there, great restaurants, events going on all the time. Um, and uh, the Roberts family that, you know, put it together, uh, thank God they have deep pockets because that thing is a huge undertaking. It is, and my understanding is it's completely paid for. Yeah, well... They didn't borrow any money. It was only a billion Amazing. dollars, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's well, a billion here or there? You and know? when you go there, you go, yeah. Yeah, I can see where they put their money. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, let, let me tell you, the Roberts family has done great uh, things for Marion County. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're continuing to do great things. I know they've gotten, uh, they have uh, Golden Ocala Country Club tied in with World Equestrian Center, and that they're turning that whole area of Marion County into um, a world mecca uh, for folks that um, love horses Uh, We are going to be having some of the greatest um, um, horses in the world competing out at the World Equestrian Center Mm -hmm. uh, in the coming years. So uh, my daughter was a hunter jumper uh, growing up, so I learned enough about horses and horse riding to know it's very expensive. Right, and (laughs) it's not riding around in a circle. It's not racing. It's dressage and and 
uh, hunter jumper kind of stuff, right? Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it's really a wonderful sport. Yeah, you can, uh, and in this part of the world in North Central Florida, it's not so hot that you can't really, uh, you can really get out there in the woods and uh, uh, w no matter what time of the year it is, there's some incredible uh, trails that you can uh, go on. So really. Um, take advantage of it. Uh, we, we're a big uh, sponsor. So anyhow, uh, we got a lot going on. Uh, this coming Friday night is the grand opening of the Great Southern Music Hall exhibit uh, featuring the photographs of John Moran uh, in 1974. Yours truly uh, opened up uh, the Great Southern Music Hall with uh, Jim Forsman, and we're celebrating uh, the incredible musical acts that came through Gainesville and performed at the Great Southern Music Hall. Uh, it was a magical time. Uh, there's been some terrific articles written recently in the Gainesville Sun um, about the history of the Great Southern Music Hall. If you want to have a really a, a terrific time, go down to the Matheson Museum 513, East University Avenue, right next to the big library downtown, and you will be able to see uh, a great exhibit. We brought in some of the top professionals in the country to put uh, the exhibit together, and it's going to be there for uh, a year or more uh, with special symposium. So stay tuned. Uh, we're going to let you know what's going on. However, it is uh, fish, the grand opening is uh, this Friday night, and uh, uh, check it out, the Matheson Museum. And finally, uh, least, uh, you know, what do they say? Last but not least, okay, we got the Tom Petty Festival, and that's a good segue into my next guest, Dan Spees, who is... Uh, uh, organizing the uh, the uh, Tom Petty Festival. Dan, uh, give us a little rundown of what's going to be going on to celebrate Tom Petty, Gainesville's native son, his birthday. Well, we have um, 20 acts uh, that will be performing. We have uh, about nine storytellers that will be that of people that knew Tom and will tell stories of Tom and their experiences with him. Uh, we have... Uh, Tom Ledden, who was in Mud Crutch with, with, uh, with Tom Petty both in the early days and in uh, uh, 2006 and 2014 when he, Tom reformed the band. Uh, we have um, uh, Jeff, uh, Jake Thistle, who is this amazing 18-year-old who will be huge. He will be huge. I, I've heard Jake Thistle <coughs> is you know, going to be an incredible... He's already an incredible talent. He's just not as well-known as some of the nationally known acts, but I understand he is going to amaze people. If there's one act you want to see at this festival, it's going to be Jake Thistle performing. Without a doubt. But we have a number of amazing, amazing acts. Who are uh, some of the other acts? Shine. Have you ever seen Shine? She has a band, Shine and the Shaker. She'll be just coming here without her band. But it's, uh, and this lady is uh, as if Jimi Hendrix came back uh, as a lady. Uh, she's amazing in her uh, guitar playing and her singing and um, has original music, but also plays classics like Jimi Hendrix songs and just you, you get your heart fluttering. It's pretty amazing. You know, Jimi uh, Hendrix consistently is rated as the greatest guitarist of all time. Mm -hmm. And he was left-handed and played a right-hand guitar. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like... Um, he played it upside down, really. And self-taught as well. Yeah, that's yeah. an amazing story. So I, every once in a while, I'll go on this list of the Rolling Stones' greatest guitarists or whoever makes the list, you know? Right. And uh, wow, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix. So uh, Shine is going to... Uh, Shine's going to be there. We have a band called Sousa. I don't know if you've heard of them. They've, they, they're made up of University of Florida graduates from their music program or students. And there, it's five horn players. Uh, one of them is a tuba player, right? Actually, a Sousa. It's like a tuba, like and, John Philip Sousa, right? Yeah. And oh, uh, there's a tr there's a trombone, there's a clarinet, and then there's a couple, tr then there's a trumpet. They don't sing, but literally, they're they're jumping in the air as they're playing. This 
little girl has got the tuba, and she's jumping a foot <laughs> off the ground with this tuba, and they're playing with so much energy, you can't help but want to get closer and start dancing to it. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to take a quick thir- uh, one-minute break. I'm here with Dan Speeds. We're talking about the Tom Petty Festival in Gainesville, Florida, coming up October 20th through the 22nd at Hartwood Soundstage at... Uh, what is it? Six hundred South Main Street. Six seventeen South Main Street. You get to six hundred South Main Street, and you'll see it. You'll it's see right it there. Yep. And uh, we're going to be back in sixty seconds on Melden Law and Friends. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Melden Law, we won't back down. Being a client at Melden Law was special because I felt like I was really being listened to and I felt welcome by the entire staff. If I were in a situation where I needed legal advice and help, I would absolutely reach out to Jeffrey because his reputation alone speaks for itself. But on a personal level, I know that he would take care of me and help me solve those problems and I would feel safe with him. Welcome back to Melden Law and Friends. I'm Jeffrey Melden, founder of Melden Law. Uh, If you ever need any help after a serious uh, accident crash, please Give me a call, 352-373-8000. We help put people's lives back together after they've been turned upside down. So uh, we we love to uh, help people that are in need. So uh, reach out to us or just uh, Google Melden Law and you'll find us. I'm here with my good friend Dan Spees. Uh, Dan, I know that you had a uh, successful career uh, doing, uh, you know, uh, well, you were actually in, in the media business, right? Yeah, I worked for Channel 2 for uh, 10 years. That's uh, Wesh in Orlando. Yeah, and uh, I was an independent reporter bef- for a couple years before that. And I had lots of experiences working at Channel 2. Um, you know, it was uh, from meeting um, uh, vice presidents, uh, Bill Clinton when he was running for president, uh, to going down to covering um, down in South Florida when Hurricane Andrew hit it. Uh, I went to uh, the Soviet Union and the Ukraine covering a baseball team that went there. Um, I had lots of crazy experiences. <laughs> and I was just uh, just reiterating today on Facebook that, uh, I don't know if you know, heard that Loretta Lynn died today. Oh, and I, I'm sorry to hear that. Boy, what an amazing performer. Maybe 30, 35 years ago, uh, a reporter and I went and, and covered, covered her. She was doing a concert, and we... We got invited to go to her tour bus afterwards, and we did an interview with her. And we finished the interview, and she thanked the reporter and came over to me and gave me a kiss. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, coal miner's daughter. I was very impressed. I know, I know. Yeah. She, yeah. she was, uh, yeah, they had that movie mm-hmm. um, that uh, they made about her life. It was Sissy Spacek, I think, starred mm-hmm. yeah. uh, as Loretta Lynn. But what an incredible person. I mean, great artist, great voice, all of that. But more than that, I think she was a, a great lady. Yeah. Yes. That's so, so and she gave back to a lot of people. Right. And then I then I started a uh, television production company here in Gainesville and worked with UAA, did a lot of media days with Coach Spurrier um, and uh, with Coach Meyer and, and Mullen and, and a lot of those guys, uh, Jim McElwain. You know, yeah. so, so who was the most fun to work with of all those coaches you just named? Uh, Coach Spurrier, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we are at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. Dan couldn't say anything else, even if he wanted to, but I believe you're telling no, the no, truth. No, it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> no, Steve Spurrier is so much fun because he's got the best sense of humor, right? Yeah, he does. He does. But there was one day, I have to tell you, uh, we had a background that we would tape up behind him while we were doing our interview, and in the middle of uh, what I knew was a key answer that they were going to use, it the background fell down, right? The part of it. And I had to say to Coach, Coach, I'm sorry, I gotta interrupt you, but I gotta fix that first. And he gave me a look, and we recorded it. He gave me a look, 
that we realized that's how he get his stu- it, that's how he got the players to work for him because it was one of these like roll his eyes like oh my god you just let me down oh <laughs> we were like oh we never want to see that look again <laughs> so we made sure we taped that background much better <laughs> <laughs> well the c- coach is a perfectionist i mean he wants to do uh, everything well and i i get it and uh you know he's really done an amazing job with Freddie Weeby out here at putting this uh, uh, gridiron grill together out here because uh, it's an amazing museum. So I always uh, give them a plug because they deserve it. You know, yeah. it's like uh, they really did something incredible for North Central Florida. So we're talking about the Tom Petty Festival coming up in September 20th. Or October. Did I? Say, oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> don't want. I don't want to throw them. I don't want to throw them. Anyway, October twentieth. For those of you listening, you know uh, that we already uh, missed uh, September twentieth. You know, October twentieth, nineteen fifty is Tom Petty's birthday. He was born and raised in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, it was in several different. The Epics, I think, was one of his groups, and then uh, of course Mud Crutch. A lot of us that uh, were around at the time of Mud Crutch um, got to know um, Tom Petty and the group. And it's interesting because um, I was Tom Petty's first attorney, and I remember uh, Tom coming in with the rest of the group, sitting in my. Um, office. I was a kid. I was, I don't know, 1971. I was 27 <laughs> years old. And uh, they were, you know, one, the best group around town at the time. And um, uh, Tom Ledden and Tom Petty were the two in the group that's, that talked the most during our meetings. So uh, you, you had um, Mike Campbell there and uh, Randy uh, was a drummer. And that uh, and those were the Danny or, Roberts there when you no came? no it was, he was gone at that point. Danny Roberts was gone, it was before Ben Montench. Okay, so it was 1971 edition mm-hmm. of Mud Crutch, and um, Tom Ledden, his brother was Bernie Ledden, who was in the Eagles, and so he spoke because you know both Tom Petty and Tom Ledden realized that Tom uh, Tom's. Ledden's brother, Bernie Ledden, he was on, you know, he was on the rise and he was, you know, in the Eagles, which was, you know, just starting to really hit big. So uh, they were all, uh, you know, going, wow, you know, they they actually had some connection to, uh, you know, the L.A. scene. So it, it was an interesting uh, dynamic. I'd love to talk about it more sometime. But uh, let's talk about this festival. It's so for those of you that haven't been out to the Hartwood um, soundstage, it's not just a soundstage. It's actually four acres of property out there, and about an acre, acre and a quarter is dedicated to this um, festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a permanent stage out there and a soundstage inside. It's a recording studio as well as a performing arts studio, and it's one of the nicest rooms uh, for performances that you'll ever see. The acoustics are amazing. Uh, there's going to be some smaller shows as well as the outdoor bigger shows, right? Right. What we do is uh, an outdoor band will finish, and we will switch. We'll, we, have a big, we have a big TV screen outside, and the, sp- the speakers outside will be tied in. And so someone will perform inside, but you'll be able to hear and watch it outside. Oh, what right. a great and, concept. And so the, the folks that bought VIP tickets will be able to go inside and hear them, but everyone will be able to hear them. They'll just, mm-hmm. they, you know, but so, so, but the thing about that is, is that a lot of times, I mean, there's a few times where we're going to have to pause while we're switching bands, but a lot, but most of the time, it'll just be mu- continuous music. That's a great idea. So if people come to the event, um, what should they bring and what should they not bring? They should not bring coolers. They should bring their own chairs, you know, mm-hmm. those outdoor chairs that you use at the beach or wherever, uh, right. maybe a blanket. Um, but you will have, we'll have water available uh, for free, and, but you can also buy bot- bottled water, and then we'll have wine and, and uh, beer that will be for sale. That's great. If it, and, and there's food going to be out there, too. So you really don't need to bring anything except maybe a chair if you choose to uh, sit down in a chair. And if you come early enough, sunscreen. 
right? And right. sunscreen, yeah. So what time, okay, let's go through the days. Um, what's going on Thursday, October 20th on his actual birthday? <clears throat> uh, on on um, Well, to give you an idea, we're, we have the Gainesville market that's going on from 4 to 7. Yeah, they have a great food farmers market, market, farmer's market out there from 4 to 7 every Thursday. Mm -hmm. So... We're, you know, that's going on, and then you're going to segue into at some uh, seven entertainment. Seven o'clock, we'll, we'll have from seven to ten, we'll have about five or six acts that will be playing. And then on Saturday, we start at three o'clock with storytelling. We're going to do three hours of storytelling and a little uh, discussion among the storytellers. And then at six o'clock, we go six o'clock to eleven with a number of. Days. And, and is that on Friday or Saturday? That's on Friday. Friday. So we right. we start around three o'clock with storyteller, go into bands around six till eleven, right. and then Saturday's the uh, the biggest day, right? right. We start at one thirty and we go to eleven. Wow. So, um, what um, what are some of the um, acts that are going to be performing on uh, Friday? Friday, we have Wild Pines, uh, we have The Lonely Worm, uh, we have um, Rob Ellis Peck and his band. Now, Rob Rob's Ellis great. I've seen, I know Rob. He's right. terrific. If, if you haven't seen Rob Ellis Peck, he, my first impression of him was, oh my gosh, this guy can sing. He should be like in some major band or something. He's literally that talented. And he's probably the best harmonica player to ever, ever come out of Gainesville by a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and he plays guitar and does a whole lot of stuff. So that's um, that's Rob Ellis Peck. There's a, uh, we will also have, um, I'm not sure exactly who else. When's is Jake Thistle playing? He's playing on Friday. Uh, he'll do a pop-up, a little 15-minute. I think he's playing in the All-Star Band on Friday. And then on Saturday, he'll, he'll have a, a segment in the evening, probably around 9 o'clock or so. Uh, he will he will be solo, and then afterwards. So both nights, Friday and Saturday, we're doing an all star session. The last hour is an all star session where we have a a crack band, and the top performers of that night will come in and do the hits of Tom Petty. Wow, it's going to be an amazing Tom Petty festival. So again, tell everybody how they can get into the festival. Well, uh, it's free. It's uh, you go to TomPettyWeekend.com. We ask you to register for your ticket. That helps us in planning as to make sure we have enough beer and wine and that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and also to know if things are going to get too crowded, then we're going to cut it off. So right now we're we're well over 1,900 people have reserved tickets, and we expect to get it to about to 2,500, maybe 3,000. Yeah, it's good. It's going to be really fun. Uh, I'll tell you, I've been out to festivals before. They do a terrific job. Probably the best thing is that you have a permanent stage and permanent setup there. So you really have refined it as far as the sound system, the video, the uh, sound stage, and uh, going out there. There's going to be great food. I've, I've, those restaurants out there are terrific. And we okay. have a number of uh, food trucks as well that will be there. Yeah, so we've got restaurants, we've got food trucks, we got uh, tons of beer and wine and water, and um, there are going to be other exhibitors out there. And you, you yeah, know, we have some vendors selling their wares. Yeah, yeah. and so it, it's going to be a, a terrific weekend. October 20th, 21st, 22nd. All you have to do is go to TomPettyWeekend.com, mm -hmm. and it's free. Uh, and you can reserve your uh, tickets out there. And uh, it's going to be a major event. Uh, everybody knows that uh, the Tom Petty Weekends here uh, have been amazing. Uh, they're going to continue. I know the Tom Petty family and representatives came and met with y'all, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's very uh, significant that uh, they know what you're doing, they're sanctioning what you're doing, and that they, uh, you know, it's like they want um, our local folks to show up and celebrate uh, the life and the times of uh, Tom Petty. One of the most interesting things about Tom Petty is the songs that he's written. He wrote so many very, uh, people that really study songwriting are so impressed with his songs. But when you hear other people do them, you, you're amazed at how fresh and interesting they are. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't tell you enough. You'd think, oh, it's just a cover, but no. 
It, it, hey, he, 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 his songs really lend themselves. <laughs> okay, we're going to the Tom Petty Festival. I've got to get off and make sure that we get done on time today, Dan. <laughs> but it's been so much fun having you out here. Go to the Tom Petty Weekend. Dot com. Get your tickets. Get in. Check out this festival October 20th through the 22nd. This is Jeffrey Meldon signing off on Meldon Law and Friends, and we'll see you next week.